Testing, 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 testing. Oh, I hope I hope folks uh, get the notice on this. I guess I'm going to have to wait a uh, few minutes to see if folks show up. Uh, check my channel. You should be able to see another live. Yeah, well, somebody uh, just uh, somebody just showed up, and I have one viewer now. <laughs> Okay, yeah, because I had to stop. I had to end the live stream and start another one, unfortunately. So I guess all we can do is wait a few minutes for folks to uh, show up. Um, I guess I have to ask at what point I, this uh, the uh, live stream actually uh, locked up. I was in the middle of making brownies, and of course it had to happen while my back was turned. What else is new? <laughs> Um, but nonetheless, um, there are two persons watching. Well, as I said, you know, just have to, uh, have a little bit of patience. Nonetheless, welcome back everyone to part two of this, uh, YouTube live. Um, yeah, apparently YouTube decided to have some technical difficulties. Okay. Uh, and let me say right here, right now, no, it was not the cat's fault. This one was not trouble tap dancing on the keyboard. Uh, he's sleeping, in fact. Uh, yeah, uh, Jamie says that he is uh, asleep. He's all curled up into a little purring ball of fur. So hmm. uh, he's getting pretty big, actually. Not so, not such a little ball of fur anymore. Yeah, yeah, he wreaks enough havoc that he's exhausted and passed out. Yeah, I believe it. So <laughs> anyway, welcome back, everybody. Um, and I do apologize. What meaning is attached to the necklace? Uh, this is Moorcock, uh, the uh, famous uh, cl uh, classic science fiction writer. It's also associated with Warhammer uh, 40,000 and um, and it's also associated with some, you know, something in paganism that they call uh, chaos magic. Uh, all I'll say is at this point is that my channel is ded dedicated to what I have called cooking magic. And that is all I'm going to uh, leave it with at that. Because the subject here is mostly about the cooking. Uh, some point or another, I might try doing like a personal uh, live, but I don't know if really I deserve something like that. No, that sounds too egotistical. Let me try this again. I don't know if really my channel is big enough that it's worth doing one of those ask me anything type of live videos. <laughs> Let's uh, stick with the uh, subject, I guess. Uh, okay, I was making brownies and I did make brownies. The brownies are now in the oven. I really hope that at le it at least reached the point where you saw the brownies going into the oven. But which and I do feel bad because yeah, they were very easy to put together. There's really no problem to really nothing difficult to it. I mean, uh, essentially just your very basic ingredients, which pr produces something like a box mix, and then you just mix in the eggs and melted chocolate, and then uh, into the oven it goes. Um, one thing, actually, now let me say again what I what I did say as I was speaking, and apparently the sound was out. When you're making brownies, I've found, again, thanks to uh, Jamie here, that it's better to use a, a uh, wide cast iron pan or any baking pan, a baking dish with a lot of surface space. I mean, I had previously tried making brownies with a 10-inch uh, skillet, and they came out okay. But if you use something with a much wider surface, like in that case, I was using the 12-inch or actually 30-centimeter uh, circular pan pan with a lot more surface space and that gives you a lot more room and it, it produces better brownies including yeah. including having that crust on top yeah. so yeah, I, I like not using baking soda because um you know it helps things rise right but for you don't really want brownies to rise too much you know what i mean like you like to me that's what i found but personally plus i really sense eric will tell you this i'm mm. really really sensitive to taste well yes um, and if, if baking soda is in something i don't know why i can taste it um Anytime with cookies or anything like that, um, mm. I can taste when there's baking soda in it. So, um, right. but yeah, the wider space because it, it comes out thinner, and you don't have to cook them as long, which ends up, you know, when you 
you have to cook a brownie a long time because you're cooking it in such a right. small space. Right. They end up, you know, drying out a little bit. So, yeah. you know, so, the wider space, the chewier they come out and the yeah. gooier. Yeah, you know. which, which is what you want, yes. And then also they don't have to bake as long either. I mean, what would you say we're going to be baking this total maybe 20, 25 I know, minutes? Well, this is true. Well, well, 40 minutes. Yeah. Okay, well, let me see what mine says. In the, uh, I don't even remember. That's why I keep all my recipes on my website. <laughs> so uh, then after this, we'll get back to the subject of cast iron. And it does out. say, <laughs> um, let me see, using the same rubber spatula, it does say bake about 35 to 40 minutes. So there's plenty of time. Okay. They are passed out. Oh, exactly man. The same. Oh, man. They're not brothers. Right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no. Cracked, show them. Yeah. We're going to take care of that. <laughs> okay. Now, we did have a fun time blaming him, though. <laughs> have you ever used the Victoria skillet? I have nine not. Right. Yeah. Nine times out of ten, you'd be right. I have not, unfortunately. I mean, it's what I said previously. Uh, I am not able to keep up with all of these brand new cast iron pans, even though, I mean, there are so many of them out there, even ones like the Victoria Skillet or Utopia Kitchen or Legends or even Pampered Chef. Uh, I am not going to get these just because they're there. I have a really decent collection now, or at least I think so. Um, though they are tempting, I will say that, and which is one reason why I encourage anybody else who has owned and used any of these pans to please comment, whether it's the Victoria Skillard or Utopia Kitchen or Walmart's Ozark Trail or Butterpat or Field. Please, I mean, please feel free to comment. I mean, that's what I really like to hear because there are things that I, a lot of things I don't know and would like to learn. For instance, I only learned recently that the field company actually now has a lid uh, for their pans. And, um, which I understand also happens to perfectly fit the um, Stargazer skillet too, which is also good because, yeah, that's one thing. The Stargazer, at least as long as I've had it, as far as I know, they was not a matching lid for it. Uh, likewise, uh, Finex, of course. Oh, by the way, Finex was actually acquired by Lodge about two or so years ago. Uh, at this point, there has been no effect at all on their production. And likewise, they have not had any effect on Lodge's production. Who knows what's going to happen in the future? I guess it depends on what they decide. But... Finex, of course, has branched out with, they have a number of different size skillets. They have, now they have griddles. They even have this huge, incredibly heavy and incredibly expensive Dutch oven too. So <laughs> um, I believe Butterpat also is going for a uh, Dutch oven, which again is, is really, really expensive. We're talking like in the area of Le Creuset here. And that's the thing too, uh, for people who uh, say that these new cast iron pans are too expensive. I mean, it's really the same as those people who might be able to, who might want to invest or splurge in a stove or a Le Creuset enamel Dutch oven versus getting a uh, Cuisinart or even a large Dutch oven. So, I mean, for a number of people, they feel it's worth it. I mean, I myself last year finally uh, had to um, end the, reach the end of life of my big uh, Le Creuset enamel Dutch oven, and I took the plunge and uh, managed to invest in a uh, stove huge 13 quart enamel Dutch oven, which I've used it several times and I really enjoy it. And I'm aiming to get a lifetime of use out of it. I'll be very careful using it, of course, but yeah, I'm, I'm, I've enjoyed it and I do not regret it. Didn't know field made lids. This is a game changer to comparing to vintage Griswold, especially since I think I mentioned field is really trying to shape them up to be themselves up to be the modern day Griswold and hold on let me check my connection here I want to get a better connection than that um, field is shaping themselves up to be the modern day Griswold and they are hey they have produced a lid that looks like a Griswold lid on the underside of the uh, field lid is the circular uh, pattern that you see on the underside of vintage Griswold lids. And I'm pretty sure 
that's no coincidence. <laughs> Okay, uh, peg two, thumb back, Raymond. So what happened? Well, as best as I could tell, it was indeed my uh, YouTube connection locked up. I had to actually end the live stream and start another live stream. Uh, I'll say again, no, it was not the kitty's fault this time. So, <laughs> uh, yeah, for once he's innocent. Um, okay, deal from Missouri. Wednesday is now back on track. Well, thank you. It's okay. Uh, Indiana's back. Well, yeah, as I said, I had to stop this and start it up again. Anyway, having said that, um, where are we now? Um, okay, yeah, as I mentioned, you know, the uh, Stargazer, somebody pointed out that Stargazer actually now is selling, not selling, but giving away little kit, little abrasion kits so that it will not have as smooth a cooking of a cooking surface because again the stargazers are, are so wonderfully smooth that a lot of them are difficult to season and there i guess we get into the argument between smooth cast iron and not so smooth cast iron and i think i'll say something else again about the lodge black lock um again i actually got this because i wanted it as a chef skillet and it has performed wonderfully as a chef skillet it does not have a glass smooth surface, and that was done intentionally. Um, let me do this again. It is still a very smooth surface, and I have seasoned it as well. And as you can see, it's picking up a nice uh, seasoning on it as well. Um, people have said, "Well, it's not worth it." Oops. Yeah, it's not worth it because they don't polish, they don't smooth it down. As a matter of fact, they do. Here's uh, one thing I saw in person when I toured the Lodge factory. I've been down there to a Lodge's um, factory during the National Cornbread Festival. And here's the thing. Uh, in Way back during like the 60s or 70s, yes, Lodge and also Birmingham Stove and Range. They're not the only ones. Uh, they actually did start producing pans that were not milled down and smoothed down to a glass smooth surface. And this was an initially a cost cutting measure. <laughs> Um, however, Lodge then, as you know, um, by the late nineties, they were struggling and on the verge of bankruptcy. And that was when Wagner had also gone out of business and BSR had folded several years ago. So things were really tough for American cast iron manufacturers then. And then Lodge hit upon the idea of their factory seasoning. You know, the idea that you can take uh, a, pan, a, a cast iron pan right home from the store and start cooking it right away. You don't have to season it because they did the seasoning for you. And that really took off like wildfire. That is probably what saved Lodge's business more than anything else. And yes, I know the Lodge factory seasoning is not that great compared to when you do it yourself, but it's good enough. And that's been enough to uh, help, again, keep them in business. But the other thing, Lodge actually developed their sur the surface of their pans, especially so that this seasoning would stick. They do, in fact, smooth down the surface. They just use a very completely different method from the old days. They do not take a grinding wheel and grind down the surface to polish it to a smooth finish. You know, those old vintage pans, they do have those uh, wonderful, beautiful looking, what they call mill marks, you know, the swirl marks on the surface that uh, actually are quite attractive. What lot, but what Lodge does now is they take every single one of their pans and they put it into like this uh, big, I did, it's not like a centrifuge. It doesn't exactly go, uh, go around this way, but it vibrates uh, very, very heavy and very fast. It's a very heavy vibration. And they actually uh, put, completely cover the pan in very heavy steel ball bearings. Actually, give me a moment. You know, I should... I should have shown this to you years ago. Give me one second, please. Apologize for the delay. I will be back in just a couple of seconds. Let's see where, where it is. There's one. I know there's more. Two. Three. Here it is. And here it is. You see this? These are actually the uh, the uh, pieces that Lodge uses to smooth out their pans. Uh, 
It's a little hard to uh, get the right angle here of this. Let me try holding one of these up like this. These things here are made, I guess they're made of steel. They are actually very heavy. I'd say any one of these probably weighs maybe half an ounce or, or so. So these are actually very thick and very heavy. And they've got a unique uh, shape. You know, they look like, like a top or a flying saucer. And as I said, Lodge dumps hundreds or even thousands of these into that big, uh, big vibrating machine they have. And, it, and those things really move around on the surface here. Let me try it this way. This is what happens when Lodge uh, smooths out their pans. You know, they've got very heavy weights dancing across the surface of these pans pounding down the rough surface, pounding down all those little uh, edges and the like so that it does actually smooth out the surface. No, it is not glass smooth. It does indeed have that uh, rough surface, which is how the seasoning sticks. As you know, it's really easy to use your own seasoning on a uh, large pan, but that's, but that's how they do it. Um, and so as a result, in fact, if you go to any store like Walmart or Marshall's or anything like that, you run your, your finger across one of their own Asian made pans, like the uh, Ozark trail that has a much more gritty sandpaper like feel to it. Whereas the lodge pan does actually have a smoother feel to the surface. It's really not uh, really not that uh, rough, uh, despite what people say. It, no, it is not glass smooth, but in fact, it is. Um, it has been smoothed down. And as I've said before, I really enjoy cooking in large cast iron pans. I now own quite a few large pans, brand or modern day ones that are made like this. I have no need to grind them down. They work wonderfully on anything I want to cook with them. And so I have no need or desire or reason to smooth and grind down a large cast iron pan for that reason. And it's all because of these things, these uh, ball bearings, which, as I said, they dump into the pans by the hundreds, not just two or three or five or 10 or 50, by the hundreds. And they shake them all around at in, so that they uh, bang down the entire surface of the pan. And that's what Lodge does with their pans. They're not paying me to say this either. As I said, I've, I've said many times, I am a satisfied customer of Lodge. They do not pay me to say that because I enjoy using their cast iron and I'm glad to use it. Lodge cast iron is, of course, made in the USA, and that's one good reason to buy it. But the real reason to get Lodge cast iron is because it really is about the best you can get as far as modern cast iron is concerned. Uh, why are Smooth Griswold and Wagner's able to hold seasoning? Well, because they, uh, because they did grind them down to the point where they could hold seasoning. Um, also, as you know, um, the surface is not as glass smooth as you might say, see with a stargazer skillet. I mean, that's, that's the best I can say. Also, think of it this way as well. Uh, as I mentioned, uh, Lodge now is using their factory seasoning, which is like a, a combination of soybean oil and who knows what else, which is different from the old days when they used to coat those cast iron pans in wax. So it really was not necessary for the seasoning, <coughs> excuse me, in the Griswold pans and the like to uh, stick the way the Lodge pans do. You know, for a, a long time, what it was advised to do, in fact, was to season it in the oven for an hour before actually using it. Um, however, Lodge needs to run thousands and thousands of pans across a conveyor belt and very quickly spray on uh, one or two coatings of that, uh, of that seasoning. And it has to stick really easily. So that's another reason why they designed their surface to be... Um, to be that way, designed especially to hold on to the seasoning more than the Griswold ones were. And if you don't like that, that's really a matter of opinion at this point, I think. I mean, I can't really say any more to say that what I'm saying here will convince you to, to suddenly decide to throw away your uh, Griswold and Wapik and Wagner and 
butter pat and field and then get a large cast iron pan. No, I would rather you get a large cast iron pan because it's a really good pan for cooking. <laughs> okay, what do we got now? An Asian number five at a get an Asian number five at a thrift store and grind the handle off. Okay, I like how Solid Tech is using fine sandblasting to give a matte like finish that takes seasoning well. Yeah, exactly. They're doing the same thing there. Uh, Blacklock original is controversy with that topic because they were unmarked. Oh, yeah, Blacklock. Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah, the original Blacklock. I've heard a lot about it. As I said, I, I've been to the uh, um, National Cornbread Festival, and yes, I have met that guy, Harold Henry. I've met him very briefly. Very nice guy, too. Yeah, he enjoys talking about uh, cast iron, and he loves showing off his uh, pieces. <laughs> and there is a museum in uh, downtown South Pittsburgh as well that has quite a few vintage lodge pieces and even some vintage um Blacklock pieces. It was there, in fact, that I got to hold the infamous Lodge <clears throat> mushroom pan. <laughs> you, you've heard about that? No, I'm sorry, not the mushroom pan. The acorn pan, that's it. Oh, can't believe I forgot that. I held that pan in my hands. I should never forget the name. The Lodge acorn pan. <laughs> Those who know, know. Those who do not know, look it up. Lodge acorn pan, and I think you may be a little shocked. <laughs> okay, getting to that. Um, I like how Solid Tech... No, we said that already. Uh, I'm staying until I get brownies, or I get so... <laughs> okay. Have you seen a, an original possible black lock? Whoops, buffering again? I hope not. Okay, uh, though mine does not say it's buffering. Uh, but, uh, yeah, I just talked about uh, Blacklock. So, um, I mean, really, the thing is, of course, you know, if uh, except for the ones that are actually labeled as Blacklock, I mean, it's impossible to absolutely say what's Blacklock and what isn't because Blacklock's lo records have been completely lost, you know, lost forever. Um, so there is absolutely nothing in existence that can really verify what is a black lock and what isn't. I mean, we, I mean, there are a number of guesses as to what a black lock looks like. And if you see a, uh, an old cast iron pan done in the style of the Southern mystery skillets with a raised number eight on the uh, top of the handle and underneath it might have raised letters like a H or uh, J, E, or the like. Um, maybe it's a black lock. Maybe it's not. They they think that the black locks may have been produced in that with that kind of a design. But no one really will ever know. Not unless we have a time machine. <laughs> All right. Okay. Um, uh, solid Technics. I just looked it up. Oh, how could they mess that up? <laughs> yeah, yeah. You looked up the acorn pan, didn't you? <laughs> Does anyone know what the original black lock looks like? Um, as I said, there are pictures of some black lock skillets out there. Uh, and there are a couple of black lock spiders, and they know that only because they have the original lid that says black lock on it. Uh, there have also been a couple of black locks, um, sad irons found with the black lock logo on it. And I'm kind of hoping I find one of those one of these days because yeah, it would be nice to own it or maybe the lodge acorn pan, but I don't think that's really likely. <laughs> Um, okay, getting on here. I'm looking for some cast iron pans that fit in my air fryer, maximum nine by nine inch. Well, here again is where probably the best thing to do is go for Lodge or maybe even the new, the Asian makers because, um, yeah, Finex recently did make some of their pans that are small enough to uh, fit that size, but um, most of the uh, newer, most of the uh, higher priced fancy uh, cast iron pan makers are making them in uh, the larger size. You know, we're talking like the 10 inch, 12 inch and, and the like, because well, they're extremely versatile. They're also 
big enough that you that you can hold it in your hand and feel like you are getting something for your money. Um, nonetheless, there's no reason why you couldn't go to Walmart and get a, a uh, an eight inch, which is the number five lodge skillet for uh, ten bucks or maybe less if you can find it on sale, or even TJ Maxx or Wal or uh, TJ Maxx or Marshalls or Home Goods. They often have lodge cast iron at prices better than what you see at uh, Wally World. So uh, I would advise doing that. Or likewise, if you even just want to uh, get an Asian pan, I mean, really, as far as Asian made cast iron is concerned, I mean, this has been said time and time again. Um, the real objection to Asian made cast iron is the politics, the business politics and, yeah, the uh, political country government politics. And if you have political reasons to object to Asian cast iron, you are certainly free to do so. I am not going to force my beliefs on you or, or anyone, and I'm not going to get into politics. On the other hand, if you uh, just want a uh, an inexpensive cast iron pan, you could, I mean, for as far as users are concerned, Asian-made cast iron works just fine. Also consider it this way. If you come across an Asian-made pan at like a flea market or Goodwill or the like, uh, and you get that, I mean, where's the money going? The money is certainly not going back to China. It's already come in here to the U.S. and it's been uh, then put into the uh, second-hand market. So really, if you buy an Asian-made pan at a flea market or Goodwill or the like, you are just uh, keeping your money here in circulation. So as far as the politics are concerned, a lot of that really doesn't uh, apply then if you, if you just get a used one. And that's interesting too because uh, uh, some of the Asian-made pans are unique enough that people actually do find them attractive and they are interested in them. Well, as I mentioned before, that uh, USA pan that uh, that I have there, the one shaped like the United States, that's actually Asian made. Um, there's a very fancy uh, Chinese made skillet with a really, really elaborate design. I don't think I can even describe it very well um, that people have seen and have really liked. <coughs> Excuse me. And, of course, Camp Chef and Cabela's cast iron are also uh, Asian-made, and they are very good quality, and there's no reason why you can't get that, especially if you're looking into Dutch ovens. Uh, Lodge has, unfortunately, discontinued, as you know, its bigger Dutch ovens. It's 16, and I'm hearing rumors that even their 14 Dutch oven may be uh, approaching the end of its life. In which case, then, if you want a really big Dutch oven, there is no alternative but to go with an Asian maker like Camp Chef or Bayou Classic or King Cooker. So, um, and really, they are actually very decent for cooking. So, the politics are probably never going to be resolved, and I'm not going to try resolving them here on this channel. Um, so... Basically, everybody is, of course, free to make their own decisions on it, and I'm not going to force that on you. I have to say, I am smelling some brownies at this point. And, yeah, we are actually getting on in time again. I mean, it's been about, uh, looks like it's been half an hour already, so that means I think these, I think these brownies may be done. Okay, yeah, okay, I get the point. All right, which means I do believe we can make some room here and do an unveiling. So, yeah, I think they were saying that. I, I was saying, yeah, I, I think you're sorry. right. All right, let me uh, take these people on a roller coaster ride again. Magic carpet ride. <laughs> Well, don't worry. It's all part of my rock and roll fantasy. Shit. Okay, there we go. Which means, uh, while you're there, could you pass me one of those oven mitts? Thank you so much. Okay. All right. Which means, that's okay. Which means, here we go again. Let me put this mic down someplace safe. Mm, guess it'll have to go over here. 
Oh, yeah. yeah. Watch that. Sorry. Oh, damn it. How did that happen? No, oh, you walked into it. Sorry. Sorry about that, folks. Technical difficulties. Yeah, technical difficulties. Uh, okay. Yeah, yeah, that's it. Blame the cat. No, he's out here now. I'm going to oh. bring him back in the room. That's all right. All right, folks. Okay. What, what, what are you using the camera? Uh, the camera is right there. So. Say hi, guys. Say hi. Yeah. Say hi to the camera. Camera this way. <laughs> yeah. Not impressed. I'm sure he is. <laughs> all right. Now, at last. Thank you, everybody, for their patience, as I've said about 10,000 times. Oof. And here it comes. And lo and behold, we have brownies. <laughs> and we have brownies. All right, let me step around here. <clears throat> so, you know, these brownies again were made in the solid Technics big skillet. This thing here is about uh, 12 inches across. <laughs> so yeah, I'm looking forward to uh, cracking these babies open. And we will go from there. <laughs> it's a bit of an odd design. Well, yeah, I, yeah, wait till you see the bottom of this, actually. I hope you made enough for all of us. <laughs> this pan's big enough. Well, it might actually uh, feed a few. Oh, has anyone tried the burrow furnace stuff? Um, burrow furnace is interesting because they make their pans. Every single one of them is made by hand, which is one reason why they're so expensive. Uh, video is working fine now in northern Louisiana. Oh, glad to see that. <laughs> yeah, if you need help eating brownies, <laughs> I'm sure we will. <laughs> okay, having done that, there's another view of the brownies. At this point, I just have to let these things cool off, and then we will uh, dig into them. Otherwise, I'm... Saying that, uh, you know, we may actually be at, at our point by now because, you know, we are getting into it's been about an hour and a half, even with that delay. And like it or not, it's still a work night tomorrow, work night tonight. Have to head to work tomorrow. But let me reassure you, nonetheless, you know, uh, despite everything that's been happening over the last few days, you know, we're all still here and we will get over what's going on the way we've gotten over everything else. And that, I think, is about all I'm going to say about that. Just uh, as always, I think all I can say otherwise is just this. Keep safe, everyone. I mean, things are, you know, everybody's really doing what they can to get through everything that's going on, and the only way we can do that is to all hang together. For, as Benjamin Franklin said, gentlemen, you know, we must all hang together or else we will most certainly hang separately. And everybody has the capability and everybody's capability and room in their lives to always do better and be better. You, you never are going to ascertain a place in your life where you can't do better and be better. Mm -hmm. So just every day, yeah, you know, just do one small thing a little bit better than you did the day before just mm -hmm. to become a better human being. Yeah. And there will be plenty of opportunities very soon, I think, for us to all help one another. Happy New Year. <laughs> Happy New Year. Yeah, that's that's the thing. This is the whole point of this, of course, has been to ring in the new and to spend some time yakking about modern day cast iron. Oh, that's all right. We're done. We're done anyway. And having said that, I appreciate, as always, everybody who shows up at these uh, live. These are a lot of fun. I will say that. Not just that they're easy to do, but I really do enjoy chatting with everyone here. Not at, not lecturing, but really chatting with everybody. So I can only uh, thank everybody for this once again. So, uh, yeah, keep safe, everyone, and keep sane, and try not to let uh, what's going on right now get the best of you. And having said that, I think once again, we will all see you next Wednesday. Enjoy, enjoy your cooking, everybody. Have a good evening.